Okay, so the objective of this problem is to determine all the forces in the truss. Uh, we can count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven unknowns. So we're going to have to write at least seven equations, probably a few more. So what's the first step in our process, usually? Find all of our reactions. So I'm going to do that. Um, let me see how I can organize this. Uh, I think I'm going to cheat to save a little space. And I'm going to use the original problem statement as my first free body diagram. So I'm going to come over here and add in a reaction at E. Another vertical reaction at the pin at A. And then I'm going to add in a reaction in the X direction. So we're going to write three equations of equilibrium for this for this two-dimensional free body. So where should we start first? Yeah, that's probably a good place. We could go, we could go to E also. Uh, we could find A Y uh, because A X passes through E. So, but uh, I always like to go to the pin. So we'll do that. So I'll assume right-hand rule for my moments, and we'll write that we're going to sum moments at A and put that into equilibrium. So there's our first e equation. So looking about A, oh, this just says P. I guess we're going to do everything in terms of P. So this is a problem that doesn't have a numerical value. It's just P. So we'll find all of our reactions as some fraction of P or some multiple of P. So if I sum moments about A, what do I have? I've got my reaction EY and I've got my load P. Let's start with P. What kind of moment does it create about A? Positive or negative? Using right hand rule. Negative. negative. So I'm going to have a negative moment. The force is going to be P. And the distance from A to P looks like 4 plus 4, 8. And then the reaction EY, the way I assumed acting up, creates what kind of moment? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So the force will be EY, and the moment arm is 4. Well, that's pretty easy. It looks like uh, EY is just going to be 2P, right? And it's positive, so I did assume that it was acting up. That, that seems reasonable. If you think of this thing hinged about the pin, if I'm pulling down here, I better have something pushing back up. So that... That makes sense. So now what do we do? Well, we can just sum forces either X or Y. I'll just do some forces in the Y first. And again, we'll make sure that's an equilibrium. That's our second equation. So I assume up is positive. So the way I've drawn it is AY and EY are both up. So those would be positive forces. And P is down, so that it means it is negative. So what is AY equal to? Looks like it's negative P. And again, let's take a few seconds to see if that seems reasonable. If you look at this thing kind of like a seesaw, hinged right here, if I pull down on this side with P, I better pull down on this side with P. So that's negative seems reasonable. And then last, in this section, or in this free body diagram, we could sum forces in the wider, I'm sorry, x direction. And I'm going to assume to the right is positive. And we do our accounting, it seems we only have AX. So that means AX has to be zero. Okay? Now we have to decide with method of sections, I'm sorry, method of joints, we're going to go through the truss trying to get the rest of these elements. We've already counted them up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So we've got some work ahead of us. So where would be places that we could start our system? Remember that when we do a moment, or sorry, when we do uh, a joint, the moment equation is satisfied. So we only get two equations at every connection or joint. So we can only generate two unknowns. So can we start at A? Yeah, there's two unknowns. A, B, A, E. I already know everything at Y, so I could start at A. Could I start at B? No. No, there's three unknowns there. How about C? No. 
before we get any farther, I think I should uh, point out that because of the geometry and because of the loading, you might want to notice that if I looked at a line right through here, this truss could fold over. So I'm thinking that once we find, say, the force in AB, I bet we're going to find the same value in CD. So we can kind of use that to our advantage, too. I'm not going to assume that once I find AB that it is CD. I'll go ahead and solve for CD, but when we get the same value, I won't be surprised. Uh, so if we can't go to B, we can't go to its mirror image at C. What about D? Can I go to D? Yeah. Yeah, sure. What about E? No, that's the worst place to start. There are one, two, three, four unknowns and only two equations. So we can either go A or D. I'll go. Alphabetically, we'll go A. So I'm going to draw my free body diagram for joint A. There it is. Uh, we have no AX. It's zero. We saw for AY it was minus P, so that means it's acting down, a value of P. I'm going to assume tension for force A, E, and tension for force A, B. And also, I'm going to look at the uh, slope of this line. It looks like it's 60 degrees. So I'll just put that in there just to keep track. All right, so what do we do? We have two equations, some forces x, some forces y. Which one should we do first? Should we sum forces in the x direction first? We can, but what will that give us? It'll give us one equation with one, two unknowns. So we don't want to do that. So we should sum forces in the y direction first. One equation, one unknown. So summing forces in the y direction, making sure it's an equilibrium, assuming up is positive, I'm going to have the Y component at AB acting up, and this is going to be what? The sine 60, right? So it's going to be up, so I'm going to have force AB sine 60. That's acting up. And what else is there? Yeah, minus P, the load P acting down. So I should be able to solve for the force in AB. It looks like it's going to be positive. I don't know what that's going to be. Sine is 60. I don't know what that is. Somebody help with that. Sine is 60 is square root of 3 over 2. Divide that. It's going to be 2p divided by the square root of 3. I don't know what that is. Make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. If you just come from Dunn Hall, it may be in radians. Wow. Come on. I know I'm slow today. I have a head cold. But what's your problem? Uh, yes. Yeah. My head feels twice as big as normal. I nor normally have a big head, according to my family. But this morning, it's swollen. <laughs> okay. Anybody get a number? <laughs> what is the answer for AB? It should be P, which don't worry about P, just basically 1 divided by the cosine is 6, I mean the sine is 60. What's that? 1.15. 1. 1. 1.15. Anybody else get 1.15? Huh? Yes, 1.15? 1.15P. Okay? It came out positive, so that means it's tension. Does that make sense that the top would be in tension? Yes. Well, if you pull down on both ends, this whole top cord is probably going to stretch. And when an element stretches, that's tension. So we probably will expect that BC and CD are also in tension. So let's, we've got Y now, or we've got FAB. Let's go for F. Uh, AC. So we're going to sum forces in the x direction. Make sure that's an equilibrium. So in the x direction, we have the force FAE. That's to the right. That's positive. 
And we have the X component of the force we just found, FAB. And that's also positive. And then the X component would be cosine 60. So you just have to put that value right in there, and you should be able to solve for AE. It looks like it's going to be negative. So take 1.15, multiply it by the cosine of 60. What do you get? 0.577. 0 0.577. Anybody else get that? Yeah. Yes? So that'd be 0.577p. And that one is in compression. We talked about that too. As you pull down on both sides, probably these both these bottom cord members will try to D will try to move in and down. So it'll compress that whole bottom edge. So that makes sense too. Any questions about that? Because it's kind of like shampoo. You're just going to rinse, wash, repeat. So we're just going to repeat. Find another joint, do it again. Now, we've already talked about this line of symmetry, so where would be a good place to go and see if we just did this right? Probably D. Because we would expect to get the same results, probably. Now, we could do that. Where else could we possibly go now that we have, we have these two horsemen? Could we go to E? Not yet. Because there's still one, two, three unknowns, even though we have one of them. But we could go to B. But I think it's going to be easier right now just to go to D and get some, uh, some confirmation that we did this correct. So I'm going to go and look at joint D. And you're going to kind of see that we've just got the same thing except uh, mirrored. So now we have the load P acting down. I'm going to assume tension in the bottom cord. That'll be FDE. I'm going to assume tension in this diagonal. That'll be FCD. And it has the same angle here, 60 degrees. But just to make sure that kind of looks a little clear, I'll put a little line there to kind of break it. So, just like we did here, we're going to start with summing forces in the Y because we only have one of our unknowns has a Y component. And if you do that, you're going to see, hopefully, something very similar to what we've already done. So summing forces in the Y direction, uh, the Y component of CD will be up. So that'll be F, C, D, and that'll be the sine of 60. And then acting down will be the load P minus P. And if you look at that equation and that equation, you will see that they are in in form identical. So if we process that one correctly, we should see that the force in CD is equal to also 1.15 P, just like we did before. Since we had trouble calculating that one the first time, let's just do it again to make sure that we can do that. It should just be P divided by sine 60. That should be 1.15 P, is that right? Excellent. So if you're doing this on the exam, you're probably saying, oh, this is great. It's working out. So now if I sum forces in the X direction, I should see a similar pattern again. So in the X direction, I have the X component of DE. It's moving to the left, so that's going to be negative. Force DE. And then also the X component of CD, which we just computed. Of course, we have CD, so you can plug it in there. And you should find that the force DE is negative. And let's hope it's 0.577, which is basically, uh, what's the cosine of 60 times 1.15? 0 0.0577? Yeah, you guys agreeing? You guys checked that already? Cool. All right, that's four of them. And how many do we have? We had seven, so we got three more to go. We're over halfway done.
And just to help uh, help us keep track, I'm going to put a little squiggly mark here. I've got that one. I've got that one. I've got that one. I've got that one. So we've kind of just got this core triangular section here. At, at this point, uh, all the joints are in place. You can go to B because we have this one. We can find these two. You can go to C and you can find these two and you, you're done. You can go to E, but E is going to be a little tricky. Uh, even though you have these two, you have two unknowns. They both have X components. They both have Y components. You have to solve them simultaneously. It's not hard, but you could do it. I think I'm going to go take the easier route, and I'm going to do B and then C. Okay? okay. So I've kind of run out of space on this page. So I'm going to, I'm going to flip it up. And um, we'll do joint B. So I'll draw joint B. And then let's see what we've got. I've got uh, this guy, which is the force from A to B. I've got this one, which is the force from B to E. And I got this one, which is the force from B to C. Excellent. I'll, I'll just put a little dotted line in here to show you the horizontal. And then from there I can say tell you that that's 60 degrees and that's 60 degrees. Also remember that we already know AB. So since I know AB, which one of these two could I get quickly? Could I sum forces in the Y direction first? Well, sure. So I'll be able to find BE in terms of AB, and then I can sum forces in the X direction and find BC. So we'll do Y, we'll do the Y one first. So I'll sum forces in the Y direction. And what do we have? Well, both these forces are acting down, so they're going to be negative. The first one's going to say minus uh, F A B sine 60. That's this one. And the one BE is identical in form. So it'll be the force in BE also sine 60. So I can cancel out. I can divide the whole thing by sine 60. It just says FAB. Or in this case, it'll say FBE is equal to minus FAB. Right? And what is FAB? Yeah, I'll flip it back over. We found FAB. 1.15P. And it's positive, so this will be negative 1.15P. Okay? Negative means compression. So it means that this element here is in compression, which kind of makes sense. This, this is almost like a wheel, and the spokes of the wheel push out to keep the wheel from collapsing. So that makes kind of sense to me. So now we can finish up by making sure that we have equilibrium in the x direction. So we'll sum the forces in the x direction. And now we've got a lot to account for because everybody's got an X component. So I'll just start from the left and work my way to the right. So starting at the left side, I've got FAB. It's to the left, so that's negative. And the X component of that is cosine 60. And then I've got FBE, which is to the right, so that's going to be positive. Also cosine 60. And then finally, I've got BC, which is to the right. Now remember, though, I've got both of those guys. So I can fill in both of those. So what is uh, FBC? So uh, this one is negative, and this one is positive, so those two add together. 
I think the cosine of 60 is half, right? Yes. So that means these just add up to 1.15p. So FBC must be 1.15p. Is that right? That's my Rain Man calculator result. Okay. You guys have to drop some sticks on the ground for me to do that. Anybody get that? I got I got 1.15p. Anybody else get that? I get a little confused there. I see that FB is in the positive direction, but it's a negative number. So when you plug in... Well, F, FBE is negative, so you plug this right. in. This, is, this will be a negative value. Right. And then this one's positive, and it's negative. So you add those two together, you get a negative. Throw it to the other side, so you get a positive result. Okay. It just so happens that cosine of 60 is a half. And FAB and FBE are equal. So it's just, I think it comes out to 1.15p. Anybody else confirm that? Nope, I see a couple heads shaking. Are you disagreeing with me or you actually did it? Oh, thank you. I'm right? You're agreeing that I'm right. Ah, oh, I like that result better. So that means that this is intention. And we already talked about the top chord being intention, so that makes sense. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, it is positive here the way I drew it, right? To the right. But the actual value of BE that we calculated is negative. So when I put that negative value in there, this term will become negative. And this term is negative. So you add them together, you get a negative. But you move to the other side of the equation, then BC becomes positive. So we all, are we finished? No. No, what are we missing? C. C. E. This guy right here. So I'm going to go to joint C. And I'm choosing joint C over its uh, poss other possibility, E, because we've already talked about this C, B being kind of a mirror image. So that's going to help us out. So when I go to C... In tension, I'm going to have the force in BC. In tension, I'm going to have the force CD. And then I'm going to assume tension for the force CE. And that's the one I need. I'll go ahead and put a little dotted line and put some geometry. That's 60 degrees and that's 60 degrees. Now just to kind of help you visualize this, uh, we just found BC, so I know that one. And we found CD before when we did joint D, so I know that one. So this is the only one I don't know. What's the cleanest way to get that one? Yeah, I think some forces at the Y would be the be better choice because you would only be dependent on one value. If you sum forces in the X, you'd be dependent on two previous values. I think it's just a safer bet. Plus, it's less work. So let's sum forces in the Y. I bet you can guess what we're going to get. Probably the same thing we got for BE. and We got BE to be 1.15 T. We'll probably get the same thing here. So summing forces in the Y direction, both my forces are down. So I'll have minus F C E, and that's going to be sine 60. And then the C D is also down, and that's also sine 60. And if you look at this equation, then we sum forces at joint B, and then we sum forces at C. You see they're, they're pretty much the same equation. In fact, we can divide through by uh, sine 60, and you'll get that FCE is equal to minus CD. And what is CD? have to go back over here. Uh, we got CD to be equal to 1.15P. So it's going to be minus that or minus 1.15P. And we're done. That only took 25 minutes. 
On the exam, you're going to have 15 minutes of problem. So this is not a really a testable problem. It's too long. But for homework, no, it's, I don't care. I'll give you one with 50 members in it. I mean, you got plenty of time, right? You guys don't sleep or eat, do you? No, we eat on the So, uh, any other questions before we uh, stop this one?